Hello, everybody, and welcome to an extra and extra special episode of Unsealed and Revealed. Clapping, clapping, we're all clapping, we all, I see it, I appreciate it, and I respect it. Uh, I am your host, Jeff May, and with me, as always, I have our resident six-scale expert and all-around littlest giant to know, Guy Clender. Guy, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's good yeah. to see you. It's good to see you too. Two days in a row we I get know. to do this. I, I definitely like that. We've got some good stuff to go over. Why not do a couple episodes? Of yeah. Of course, we have our unparalleled, amazing, spectacular moderator, Cassidy. Cassidy's on the ones and twos, and she will be taking your questions, comments, and concerns through all the live channels, uh, all the ways in which you are uh, watching this. Um, so Cassidy, say hey. Hey, super hey. stoked to be here, second day in a row. So I gotta be honest, I'm liking these two days in a row things where we get to play with a toy and then talk about it. I, I could do this daily. I don't know what you guys have planned, but. Legitimately a dream of mine as a child. So I am <laughs> exactly. excited. Um, to be able to do that. Uh, now, today, I'm very excited because we are looking at the Ant-Man six-scale figure from Hot Toys. And as you can see, just like yesterday, a uh, guy here has been in the back studio these past couple of weeks, and he is feeling awesome. Right, Guy? Oh, I am. Very healthy. Yeah, uh, and even though we have that information, even though we know that Guy is being very, very healthy, we are making sure that everybody is practicing social distance and being safe we got my man brett behind the camera he is way more than six feet away he's wearing a mask no one else is in the studio with guy uh and as always we are doing our best to ensure the good health of ourselves and others and we hope among all hopes that you are also doing the same now keep an eye out after the show because we're going to be updating you with some sideshow con news as you know we've got a lot of information coming at you this has been a whirlwind of a week and it's not going to get lighter we've got a lot more stuff coming at you so make sure you stay tuned uh now we are going to take a look at this figure guy do me a favor tell me about this ant-man six scale figure from avengers endgame all right now this is actually the ant-man from ant-man and the wasp um it is. And, oh, yes. my bad. However, the the, the suit, uh, I believe his suit is the same in Endgame, so um, I think you can display with it. Uh, love the box art on here. Uh, let's take a look at that first up. Uh, I always think this is fun, how they show him in kind of the shrinking or enlarging um, uh, that we've uh, seen there. Uh, the background of it is... Uh, these uh, connected hexagons, little dots, uh, kind of the quantum realm look. Um, in a uh, chrome foil uh, holographic Ooh. is the, there we go, trying to wiggle it a little bit so you can see, is the Ant-Man yeah. and the numeric of it. And then in the gloss is the PIM logo that we have there. Oops. Also in the chrome that is the title is our Movie Masters and our Hot Toys. Huh. Yeah, I realize. I realize. Yeah, it would be Endgame in Ant Man and the Wasp because he literally jumps directly directly into, into it. So in yes, after the um, uh, quantum zone. Yeah. On this side of the box, we have our PIM logo. Okay, you see this is creating that same diagonal that we get that runs across the front and then covers our entire side here, where we again get the PIM, and again that holographic. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this upward so we can see but that chrome holographic is on the front yeah, they, there they really they really are nailing that with and the, then the, it's also around all of the letters in ant-man and wasp um this is a really neat one uh for displaying the box uh with your figure um i like it you've got the, sh the shrinking down motion of them you have the title uh but i i really like that foil uh on there so we're going to set this off to the side and take a look at what we have underneath. This is our shoebox style. We're back to that one with uh, this particular figure oh. and showing our cast and crew and development team. Again, that hexagonal uh, quantum realm uh, style. Now, mm. lift that off and here we go. Uh, and our tray for our figure. We're gonna pull this out and inside the bottom tray, um, but it will probably lay flat inside the box, but know that it's just tucked underneath, is a yeah. backdrop for you. 
Ooh. As well. All right, we've seen uh, this style, uh, I'm gonna put that up there, uh, before in some of them. This is a title card, kind of the shrinking of the figure. And this is done, they give you these two kind of the picture frame style uh, that clips into the back um, there. Oh, that's neat. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little addition. And then yeah. we're gonna have these. Oh, here we go, guys. I absolutely love the instructions. Um, there's not a ton in here, uh, uh, but a little bit of information uh, about uh, putting on batteries, doing your head swapped, um, and then uh, really uh, anytime, the reason I suggest with these is again, uh, when it lets you know anything you need to know, particularly about the suits, um, when we have these typed uh, new material suits. So let's take a look here at what we have. Um, down here is your three batteries that are going to go in the main head. I've taken them out and put those in here. Our alternate hands. Here is our shrunk down Ant-Man and our uh, the two discs, the shrink and enlarge disc. Alternate portrait. For when you swap out the unhelmeted alternate portrait, you have uh, the, uh, as the the helmet flips back upon itself. It uh, connects back into the neck piece and that is there. You have for your PIM building, which is such a fun accessory uh, oh, down here. Cute. Also with it is the extended rolling luggage type handle. I love that. That was I, such a great That's such a that fun thing. thing and I love that it's an accessory. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just a really, really would, kind of fun little would, thing to have. I was going to say, I would kill for a Walton Goggins uh, companion piece. Oh, yeah. Because. Yeah. Now, uh, then underneath, we are going to see that we have our base. We can pull out. But what I do want you to see in this overhead thing uh, is that they have padded underneath and padded the leg underneath. Okay? It's just protecting your figure. Let's set our figure on the turntable and take a look at how gorgeous this guy is. It is. Show me that. It's show me it, that man there. Oh, look at that! I, I love the I, I I I love the suit. I love the idea. This is uh, really fun. The detail in it is spectacular. Going to do a quick once around, um, and then we are going to show the uh, lit up portrait, uh, helmeted portrait, and the swap out in just a second here. I so. really genuinely loved the how the fact that they used scott lang as the the sort of current ant-man in mm -hmm. the marvel universe and having the backstory with henry pym and and utilizing a lot of the stories that we saw with scott lang sort of in in the early 2000s that were so good yeah i that was that was fun um where i when they said that they were going to add ant-man i figured it was going to be pym um mm -hmm. and somehow but yeah um, it, it just gives it more depth and allowed us to see throwbacks to like that first helmet um, and things like that. It was really, I, I thought it was a great, great idea. Um, beautiful textures in this suit. Um, it's that, that new style material. This is 3D printed, uh, particularly on the red and some of the black that, that breaks up uh, the, what, what would have been kind of a flat uh, is, is color surface. Guy, is that costume all one piece, or is there yes, like a, is, the shoulders seem raised, almost like a shoulder pad? But is that all one piece? Okay, it is all one piece. However, shoulder pad, elbow pad, knee pad, these are all added on. These are not pieces that are removable, which is why I say it's a one piece suit. Um, okay. But uh, they are on there. We're all going to talk about the shoulders when we uh, talk a little bit about articulation. Um, See, it's got the, what looks like the, it's a printed zipper that would be on the front and an actual suit zipper there on the back. Again, as I said, this is not a removable suit, okay? These are attached onto the figure. These are attached onto the figure and then the kneecaps. The belt, however, is added on. Now this does not come off, but it is loose enough for you to lift up and down for when you do your poses with the figure. Uh, that it allows for uh, a little larger range of motion um, in that one there. If it was kind of glued on, you'd be, uh, your angles would be a little less, but uh, they've thought ahead. 
to that. So, okay, good. There's, there's what I want to show you. Uh, I, I loved, I loved his helmet. I really love how this really helmet do. is. Yeah. Um, I like that too. I'm going to turn it downward and you can see that that's kind of that carbon fiber type look. That's the mm -hmm. back section. And under there is our light up feature. And that's where you're going to do your batteries. Okay. Yeah. Remove that like so. Oh, I'm going to set that down. So Did you, you were you hoping he would do something with bugs in Endgame or, or were, were you mostly um, uh, hammered by the size stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think it's neat when we saw the, the, the growth one. I did love in the origin picture, um, Ant-Man, I did like when he did things with bugs. Um, there was so much going on in uh, Endgame that I yeah. say, hmm, how, that would just be one more element to incorporate, but it would, yeah, I guess yeah. it would be kind of fun. Uh, so underneath here is going to be your three batteries and your on-off. This blows me away. I love how this looks. We're going to turn this on. I'm going to actually leave this on uh, for the rest of the show. <laughs> uh, what I think is so neat about this is, okay, there you go. You can see the eyes underneath. Um, that really rocks, man. Check this out. We're going to dim the lights here. Look how those eyes are underneath. We're going to try and go a little yeah, closer like, if how we can. Close can you get with that zoom? And uh, Brett's going to zoom in here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that wild? That I mean, the depth that it's far back. Um, this does not remove in any way like the front face plate area, but to have that that depth like you're like okay so there's the head sculpt behind it and then then this over it that really gives that uh depth behind the lens uh that's great you see that it also has the light down along the front there and these are nice and bright okay um we have a side light here so you can see what we're doing um with the figure but if we were to just be all black there would just be these vibrant vibrant red i i love that look this is how i will display it just because i think it's so neat that i get to see the eyes behind it i think that's spectacular yeah that's a really well done uh that's a really well done mask and it and is it is. is pretty cool yeah now um we're going to turn our lights back up now we're going to pull out our next two accessories and that is going to be this little one down here you see it has a little uh tab and if I spin it around, it's when the helmet goes back and folds in upon itself. And then our alternate portrait that we have here. Okay. Okay. Now, that looks good. Mm-hmm. Because uh, one of the things that I've noticed, it would be we can't sort of avoid it when we talk about the portrait is that a lot of people, you know, there were some photos that went out and people, it became sort of the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, you, what you just showed me looks great. Yes. Yeah. I will okay. say that the, uh, the photographs that some have seen on this really will depend on the lighting. Okay. If I was taking a photo with my cell phone and it's got that bright, fright front flash or other, it's going to take what's a really pretty darn great 3D sculpt and look and flatten it out. Um, yeah. I think that's one of the, the harder parts. This is also a, a, a neat thing to do. I mean, if you look at Paul Rudd, he does have a nice big smile, uh, very much like yourself, sir. Um, well, I was going to say it's about time that uh, I finally got some representation in the aggressive top tooth smile. I uh, I do smile with all, all my top teeth. Uh, it's weird uh, if you ever if you ever see me smile. Very rare. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to my six scale, uh, Jeff May, and I hope that I get a second smiling portrait. Well, well, if you throw a camera on me real quick, uh, so like my natural smile is the is that kind of like see you know so to see the smile it. with all the top teeth like whenever i see people and you see a little bit of their bottom teeth and their smile i'm like what do you got going on yeah What's so so in the discussion of the portrait and yes people were rather concerned um this is uh a dynamic it's it's an uh, i don't want to use the word animated but this is this is not an angry 
it's very Paul Rudd. It's yeah, very Paul Rudd. It's very very Paul Rudd. Um, whether you like that or not, um, the beauty is that you have that option. You have the ability to put the, a, a portrait on there. Uh, the paintwork on there is great. Uh, five o'clock shadow or any type of stubble is very difficult. And I think if we were to talk to any of the sideshow painters, any of the hot toy painters, anyone who's done it, it's not it's not something you look forward to. I think getting the life in somebody's eyes and then getting that actual look of facial hair is probably the two hardest things you're ever going to have to do. Uh, and yeah. they've nailed it with that. Okay. I, I, I'm a bit relieved <laughs> if I could be hundred percent honest, because I wasn't, uh, you know, w with all of the sort of, cause there was a uh, negative hype on, on the head sculpt. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and I have not, this is my first time seeing it. I, I, I didn't have the benefit of, of being able to have a sneak peek of this, um, in studio or anything like that. I'm, I'm quite relieved to see that it is not, um, the way that it sort of seems to have been uh, pushed from the negative aspect yes. uh, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable uh, to have this, which I will probably get. The reason I'm moving it around uh, like this is to really show you that it is very much Paul Rudd and a direct uh, angle and a straight on and a bright flash with your phone camera or other is really not going to do justice to what is actually a very good sculpt of the actor. Okay. It is, it is the best representation of him that we've had, which I think yeah, is great. Um, don't, take, go ahead. I was going to say, don't, don't blast your, your Scott Lang with floodlights when you're displaying. No, no, uh, that, that tends to be a, a, a frequent thing in photos that appear early is that, they're not really taken in, you know, they're not the way I would have it displayed in my room. Uh, and, and they're also usually not done in the best light conditions. Take a look at the, the hair there. You get that, that tightness and the, and, and the movement and motion. Uh, I think that's great. Now, what we're gonna do now is uh, swap it out onto here. Then we can swap it back because I love the lights. Um, but I'm gonna put the <laughs> helmet down here. Um, in the back, here, spin this around, okay? There is this back section here. There is a small little, uh, okay, I'm gonna turn it there. So, whoop, sorry about that. Uh, a small little notch right back here, and that mm -hmm. thin tab slides in there, okay? Now, it doesn't- be a be careful situation? Mm -hmm. Yep, tab A, slot B kind of thing. Now, it does not, you do not push it down to lock it in or anything like that. Um, that is a thin tab. Okay, so be delicate about it, but once it's in like there, there, it's done, it's in. Okay, so there's, we'll call it the neck cowl, I guess would be a good, um, or retracted Why helmet, not? or retracted helmet, and then put the head on like so. Now I could uh, put the head on first, that's not, um, that's not worrisome, you can, you can do it. I just did it in that area because I wanted to uh, give you the angle so you could see that that small little slot. Um, now, now feedback. after you have done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it over to Cassidy real quick. Cassidy, how are we doing in the chat? Do we have any questions, comments, concerns? We are doing well in the chats. We do have a few questions. Um, Stefan on YouTube wanted to know, he knows that the shoulder pads are Velcro. Um, and he thinks that the knee and elbow pads are not. He just wants that to be confirmed. Oh, I will confirm that for you. Um, they are not Velcro. Um, first up, the shoulder pads. These are attached. However, they do have a little more motion in them. The reason I don't want you to think that they are Velcroed is specifically in the instructions it will tell you. These are not a removable uh, element. Um, they, they're, I mean, they can be, but... It, it's not the kind of thing you need to remove. Um, and by doing so, getting it back onto the right position and keeping that snug um, look might be a little more difficult. So there's not a reason to remove them, so I don't think that you, sh that you should, okay? Um, but you are correct. The elbows and the knees are not. This has that ability, but I would not do it. Speaking of that, let's take a look. We're going to Thank you. Brett is on our close-up there. Okay. Yes, you can hear the sound of the Velcro. 
okay? But I'm not gonna remove it, and here's why. I don't need to. When I lift that up, okay, it's gonna free float with it and be in the right position. What I did do when I'm lifting that up is I kind of used my index and thumb to kind of lift up a little bit and gently place it. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the that reason very, I'm saying very, no. Very dainty about it. Yeah. The reason I say no with the with the removing the Velcro is um, putting it back on there. And the I can't see why you'd want to remove it. Um, the only time you would want to would be based on is it limiting my range of motion. Well, no. This is now staying right in place. Okay. Again, like that. Lifting up thumb and four. Like so. Okay. There we go. Does that answer that question, hopefully? Yes, I believe it does. Yeah. Thanks, Cass. Okay. Any others on there? Any others sculpt based? Uh, only because I love yeah, the we'll light. We'll do range of motion in a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sculpt based? No. We can do those other questions that I have a little bit later. Okay, case. great. Spectacular. So we're going to slide these back down here. Okay. Um, but you do have a lot of range of motion um, in in the figure. I am going to put back the Ant-Man portrait with the helmet up, as it is one I really, really like. Um, and we're going to discuss the other accessories in here as well. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a little, his roller building. <laughs> the Pim building is so fun. It was such a fun thing uh, that they did. And then... Uh, that it actually is now a, a toy is neat. So let's take a look. You have the extended handle there and the building itself. About shin, shin height there. I am going to move him off so we can really show off this little building. It's got the little radar dishes up top and little needles and so, okay. I'm going to turn it there so you can even see the little top of the building. A lot of detail in oh, yeah. a micro office building. Okay, loading dock back there, I guess. Double loading dock. Nice to know. I hope everybody's okay in there. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Those would be larger front doors, maybe meeting doors. I hope all the furniture was nailed down. <laughs> even the underside. And the reason I show you that is these move. Actually, they do wheel, huh? Actually rolls. Can you hear that going through the airport uh, sound? Yeah, man, when they x-ray it, it's going to be intense. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Okay. Um, now that's the uh, handle all the way down. Gently lift that up. Now you could have it just a little bit, or I pull and remove it. There's the two holes, and I place the larger one in there. Um, be gentle on this one here. Um, uh, not so much with the larger one because you have a little more play in the uh, length of them to slide in. But when you're doing it with that little handle, don't force it. But yeah, there we go. Eh, it's kind of fun, right? It's a fun. It's a fun accessory. It's a yeah, fun. It's a, it's a fun accessory to have. So now that we're talking small accessories, let's look at the other small accessories, which is a new little ant. New little, little ant. New little ant, okay? This is in the suit that he's wearing in this film and the smaller version of it. This is a different one than we've seen in others because with our other uh, Ant-Man releases, we have been given uh, tiny figures as well. I love that. As you should. As I should. Uh, and then we have our two discs. You've got one with the little red button, one with the little green button. Depending on which direction you're going. Big yeah. Are or we, small. Are we bigging or are we smalling? <laughs> bigging or smalling. Okay. Now, now uh, for if those of you that can't guess, for those of you uh, that are just uh, joining us right now, we are looking at the Ant Mail six scale figure. The Ant Mail. Uh, <laughs> Technically correct. Scientific about it. The Ant Man 
six scale uh, from Hot Toys. Uh, this is from Ant-Man and the Wasp, although the costume is the same uh, with Avengers Endgame. Uh, so that being said, also, don't forget, uh, if you like what you see, and I'm sure you do, uh, and you want to see more, maybe you should go ahead, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell on the YouTube channel. Uh, then you won't miss out any of our content, such as Guy's Unsealed Light. Uh, say you like this show, but you hate me. I know it's hard to believe, <laughs> no, but it could no, happen. No. Um, that this is an episode of uh, Unsealed and Revealed in which Guy uh, recently did, uh, I believe, the vintage color Boba Fett that we revealed on uh, yeah. May the 4th. Um, so you can check that out on YouTube. You can just see pure, unencumbered uh, joy yeah. coming out of, of yeah. Guy on that one. Um, also, we always have loads of events going on. Uh, and right now, I'm assuming everybody knows that we are gearing up for Sideshow Con, which starts July 20th and goes to the 26th. Make sure uh, that you're going to pre-register so you have access to con exclusives from us, from Hot Toys. Uh, you get There's giveaways, there's swag, there's sneak peeks, loads of other benefits. By the way, giveaways in a big way. Uh, we got a lot going on there. Cassidy, if she hasn't already, is about to drop a link into the chats real quick. And if you're not in the chats but you're just walking, watching on YouTube or something, uh, you can head to side.show slash con for all the information you need on Sideshow Con uh it's a clever url uh we have that going for us guy you got that helmet on are the lights on yes the lights are on on this one um i just wanted to tip it up just a little bit while uh you were talking just to see that depth you know and I, boom isn't that neat that's the best ant mail i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> i technically you are correct on that all yeah, right yeah it's uh, a positive gaffe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the turntable, I have uh, placed out the accessories that we've yet to look at, which are going to be our hands. We have both a right and a left in an open kind of splayed. In, in floating through the quantum zone. Exactly. Uh, we have a right, which is kind of the prepping to push uh, the button. The little to, button. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that, that uh, the button on the uh, index finger Okay, so you can kind of see that there, and it's a little bit crooked. And then the left hand is a flat thumb feature, and this is the hand that will hold. Oh, the little discs. The discs. All right, so this is your left uh, hand for that. That's also uh, clearly in the instructions that, of course, you will be reading. Oh, man. A guy, I've never heard anybody advocate for reading more outside of the <laughs> Exactly. Outside the, the classroom. Guy the, Clender. The, I think the library and myself are the ones that are telling you you should be reading. Yeah, which you uh, can't get these at the library. These no, instructions. No, no. That would be a weird. They're not. They're not available. Happen. Um, but we can hope. All right. So now uh, I've removed the accessories off, and now we are back to our figure. Um, let's get flexing, guy. Let's, let's get. get flexing. Let's get flexing. Okay. So we already talked a little bit about that shoulder yeah, joint. We, uh, up here, we've got the full ball jointed on the head. And then uh, it is a little articulated as well in the neck to give us a little bit further uh, bend on that. Okay. Now I'm going to lift up the shoulders. Again, what we talked about with kind of lifting them up a little bit. So this is going to allow us to take a look at the torsos. And yes. Yeah, Jeff, there they are. The old timey stretches. Old timey stretches. Now this is that rubberized suit. Okay, and knows that those have a tendency to want to pull back into um, their original shape. So when you do do a pose, know that it's it's a gentle and re release, a little further and don't release. Forget, that belt does move a little bit with it. It gives you a exactly. little bit of Exactly. Can you see that I can move that when I get down particularly into the leg? Okay, so I also have a good trunk twist. I'm going to lift up a little bit on here. Now there is kind of a seam, a waist seam there, and that's where I'm gonna say that it naturally would set, like so. But We're I'm gonna lift this up for me to be able to do my side bends. Now, there is a good range of motion in the suit. Okay. And then, I can bring it down a little bit, all right? So if you're going to be doing any kind of things like the, uh, any of the uh, poses like that, lift up that belt a little bit. Let's take a look at our front 
bend on the leg, and then I would. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm noticing, Guy, with you right there is I am seeing a, a hip crease. Yes. Now, in the cost. Yes. Um, because of the way the suits are, you're going to get that that type crease. But know that there is a bit of room bit in of, the suit give with it, yeah. that when I'm doing it, kind of give it a little adjustment. You want to massage it a little, it looks like. Exactly. Thank you. Definitely. Um Massage a little bit to get into place. Then when I place back down, you see that that's a little bit less. But just as you and I have discussed in uh, figures before with the tighter suits uh, and, uh, and, and motion like that, is that's how actual fabric would, uh, would react. So um, I don't mind that it would bunch up. If, it is, if the fabric didn't bunch up, he'd tear his pants. Um, now, would you, so that means that if you're going dynamic pose, you wouldn't want to hold it for too long, though, or? Correct. Correct. I okay. wouldn't dynamic pose for too long uh, in this. Um, Much like the Spider-Man. Uh, exactly. I would say that this is very that, similar yeah. to that uh, type thing. So if you're monthly reposing, you know, every you know, four, six, eight weeks, um, changing your pose on your Spider-Man, this would also be when you would do that. Um, with a dynamic suit, one like this, or um, all, all your insect and arachnid men <laughs> yeah, yeah. all concurrently. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, like we saw with Black Widow, these are attached on here. Okay, mm -hmm. we've seen this with a few others that they are not a removal. Boy, do we get a good range there? Yeah, okay. that is the range there. That's and, it's. I was going to say it's it's a good range for the place kicking. We've seen more intense with with other characters, mm -hmm. but also that's not necessary. Correct. Never yeah, it's not necessary, like, but um, it's always nice to have those those options. Um, love that there is a slight color variant of the seams and such along the boot. Um, that pattern that's in kind of what would be the uh, leather or fabric. Of it, um, this this close up that you're seeing, you can see that 3D print on the uh, the the red, uh, and this is a deeper red. Um, camera's being pretty true to the color. Uh, it's a yeah, it's little. That, I noticed that that sort of honeycomb texture mm -hmm. that yes. we've seen in a lot of the uh, the MCU suits. Yes. Uh, most of the movie suits in general, um, and, and that is you said it's 3D printed on, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, they print those on. Um, it's amazing new tech. Um, since we have his foot up like this, Jeff. Uh, guy, guy, it's time for tread wash. Boom! There. Bop, 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 bop. So we, this looks kind of like a a, a, a sneaker boot. Uh, it is. Sure. It's a little bit of a sneaker boot. We've got the uh, on the back heel. You got a bit of a horseshoe style uh, print, and then we have uh, about the, the nine little. Uh, front little quick, 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 pad style little dom dominoes uh, or something. Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, on there, it's a this is a very neat looking boot. Um, now, like we saw with Black Widow, this is uh, a molded piece. Okay, so the the ankle is not is not uh, is not as as mobile. However, we get a little bit of play up here in the top section. So I I can still move it and flatten it out, but it's not a cut piece. Okay, it's not cut here. Okay. Okay. Um, but that does not mean that I can't. Around it's there. not a real physical um, cut on there. If if it is, it's a pretty darn deep uh, up and in. It seems pretty solid um, to me on that. I could be incorrect on it, but it is not. Uh, they are connected together. Okay, so it's not a it's not a like a pop off kind of deal. At least I would not be uh, removing the feet. There's no need for it. Um, yeah, what's what what weird movie yeah. scene are you trying to play out? Yeah, exactly. There wasn't there wasn't a an issue with his foot. Um, I've lifted that belt up. I've put one forward, one backward. Okay, so there's kind of that your color really pops. Yeah, your front and back movement, then move our 
down like so. Uh, up to our arm movement, okay? Forward, got quite a range. Again, because this is that snug suit, go till you feel resistance. You can try a little bit further, a little bit further, but when it kind of stops, which would be about there, I'm not going to push that. <laughs> Full bend on there, okay? And the... That looks really... The color just pops on it, that. It, it does. And the elbow is attached, but it does move and stay in the right place, okay? I also love the the uh, chrome on the arm, the metal on the arm with the yeah. bright, uh, red, and that that's continued on to the... Um, the glove as well. So uh, that's that one there. Okay. Um, yeah, so great range of motion. Cast, why don't we uh, answer any questions that might be about posing or flexibility on it, anything like that? Yeah, we do have a question from okay. Stefan on YouTube who wants to know. Um, he wants to know if the fabric is a little more free ranging so that we can leave it in a dynamic position without creases. Um, Ooh, lucky us, we answered that. <laughs> yes. Um, well, what we're going to talk about with that is this is a, a suit style that we've seen a lot in the new uh, MCU films and a lot on the new figures. Uh, Spider Man, uh, the different costumes we've seen from them. Uh, Black Widow's was a was a snug suit. Uh, this one as well. That. Um, you can do dynamic poses, but leaving them in there for long periods of time is not recommended. Um, particularly when you'll talk about a piece that uh, does 3D printing or anything like that, know that the um, that it, that it, it has a tendency sometimes to um, adhere to itself if you uh, left it there you for know, too long. Guy, there's an interesting thing about this because I don't always advocate museum poses mm -hmm. I, I honestly think uh museum posing can oftentimes be a little bit boring um but with this character specifically and how he looks as he is shrinking and regrowing um i definitely don't feel like a slightly exaggerated version of a museum pose isn't the worst for this right um i mean even even if you're doing a pose like all i've done here is just add that hand with his little shrink mm -hmm. disc that you can bring life to it. Um, Terry's great on how to be a poser um, on um, if you watch some of his uh, he's got a class on there as well where they go through um, and even little subtle movements. I'm slightly going to yeah. twist that torso and I move the head to kind of look at that as he's in the ready I move this arm back and give it a little tilt. Um, He's thinking he's going to be probably running forward when he's got it, so I'm going to lean him in forward to it a little bit. And so I get a little something like that. Okay. So if we go head to toe on that, you just you bring a little life into it on there. Just doing, there it is. Yeah, just, just, doing, little, just bringing a little... Out. Shout out to Terry Smith for giving us the info that we all need about. Yes. How to make those look good. Yeah, the, see, uh, that's kind of the style that I would go for where, you know, that sort of the less exaggerated, less dynamic posing um, for Ant-Man sort of fits unless you were doing some kind of like, oh, I'm growing now and coming up with a fist. Uh, yeah, and it, which, you know, you, you have that option. You could, you know, kind of have the emerging. Look at the... Uh, the range I have with the look at that. Know, he looks like he just won the championship. Yeah, but I can because you brought up that type pose. I'm going to make sure that I, as I said, hold the together. But I, I loved all those first few times that we saw him, you know, emerge huge like that. That's the it's giant a, man. It's a it's yeah. a different type pose like that, but. Again, something kind of fun, um, you know, or one of those first times we see him and he's, you know, massive by the by the bridge and things like that. Um, yeah. If you if you go back, there's, you know, and watch the 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 films, you know, he's he's running a lot, which of course you could definitely do those poses, but there's 
times where he's just standing looking great and and this yeah. uh, this has that it's so. paul rudd i mean yeah how much, how he's, much he does look great he's so fun to watch um so and then i look know, at paul rudd and and how young he looks for his age you know uh, and then the i guy, look at me and I'm, i yeah. feel like a potato left in the sun <laughs> I am going to, so we see, I'm just kind of taking, what I'm doing is taking the pose here, and there's the little version of the same pose. Look at that little guy. Okay. So, you know, that's that's a museum style pose, um, you know, or a static pose sometimes, and the figure looks great that way. Um, what what's funny about the 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 micro ant man that you have there is that that's technically an accessory for other hot toys. Yeah, that's yeah, an exactly. Accessory for other pieces, if you want to put them with um, a Hawkeye, for example. Yep. Um, you know, for the classic, uh, you know, Ant Man on the on the arrow kind of vibe, or with Cap. Yeah. Um, or anything like that. It's it's, it's neat because. You can take the if you have other figures, and that's a great thing to talk about, Jeff. If you have other figures, that's the accessory you go and set with that. And and, and when yeah. you're, when people look at your your stuff, go, hey, wait a second, and notice that here's this little uh, figure that's uh, just added another dimension to your display. Um, I I I love these boots. Uh, I love the texture that's up on the uh, the top. Yeah, what are they? feel like uh they are a like hard plastic 30? they are a hard plastic for the lower section this upper section here uh is um slightly softer it's more of a rubber uh but again as i said i i feel that they are connected um i want to say right where you see this kind of seam joint which is a natural seam joint of what the real boot is it's kind of where it's attached there okay which is why i said this doesn't pop out Okay, like right here looks to be the connection point. If you can see that well enough. So, um, all right. Well, I appreciate that. That's my own personal question. I like I like that the uh, the knee pads have that kind of around the around the back elastic knee pad look. Mm -hmm. Classic, classic volleyball knee pad look. Too bad it doesn't come with a little Jamba Juice that he can. <laughs> He's got a little little Jamba Juice and his gym towel and and all of that. Um, and a static pose, and you have the tiny building next to him is funny. It's just a it's it's a fun little life. I I, I love that accessory. I I love that. I mean, I think it's neat when they give us those the micro guys because I think that's what you use, like Jeff said, uh, for other figures, and you just play them mm -hmm. together. Um, but for this one here, the building is great. The building is great. It's really cool, yeah. Um, Cassidy, any questions that we might want to jump to? Yes. Okay. Um, so Uncle Pete on YouTube wants to know, does his hands have the shrinking button on them, and do they press down? Uh, yes. The hands are, uh, the buttons are on the hands. Um, let me show you one that um, I think you're asking, do they actually depress? Um, in that scale, because they're shrunk down, um, that wouldn't be a, a thing you could could do because they are really the size of a pinhead. Um, but we have a right hand here with kind of a thumb up uh, that is ready to depress said button there. Okay, but it is also on. Let me see that there on one of our splayed front hands. You see there is also the shrink button as well um covered in so many buttons mm -hmm. um on the disc one that we talked about is there and then currently uh displayed on the figure is the fists and you'll see them there the button as on well tool. Mm -hmm. but as far as a depressing them down uh no no next up crass all right that answered that question thank you so much mm -hmm. um Killer Clam on YouTube wanted to know if you could place the box behind Ant Man. Oh, the oh yes, yes, yes. Um, we talked about that. The box display. All right, let's do that. Um, see if I can move these. Did up. They mean real quick. Did they mean the box or did they mean the display that the the toy itself comes with? Um, they mean the box. They said that they had missed the box opening. Oh, 
Well, welcome to the show. Um, this is this is the box itself. This is Ant Man on it. Um, put him on the turntable. Um, but I'm going to see if I can. Brett is going to give me a heads up whether or not I can do this. Is it okay if I set this here on the table and we'll still get the shot? Um, it's a little bit easier to see, but boom. Um, for those of you that missed the box, uh, what I think is really neat on here is that use of that foil, and that's going to actually catch uh, great light, any of the light that you have in the room, that, that uh, foil holographic uh, style to it, and then uh, descending in size down the box. How's that look, Cass? Is that okay? Probably, yes. Okay. Next up. <laughs> that, that is the box. That, that is, is the box. box. But again, uh, it is a neat uh, display option that we did talk about. Speaking of display options, what do you say we throw that background up too that it came All with? Right. Uh, this is just like a little, you know, it's funny too because every once in a while, it doesn't happen all the time, but Sideshow or Hot Toys or, or many of the other companies, they will just kind of just throw a little gimme in there. Mm -hmm. A thing that, that's not necessary, but no. it's and uh and you can either go with it uh, pose it in with this or you can um sort of choose to do it with a neutral or no background at all but this is a cool little addition and yeah. i kind of like this. all right i was excited when you said you had that because i like that sort of quantum vibe uh and it and it has uh for you being a, a collector of the comic it has a very comic cover aspect style oh yeah uh to it as well uh, that you see. Okay, so there's the artwork on that. Hopefully we can see. Um, you'll see that it has the tabs on the side. This is classic uh, picture frame kind of, so that you'll pop those out and place it behind. Okay, now it actually goes on a little angle when you do it. Okay, giving it a little bit of kind of shrink down as well. Kind of an interesting Ooh, idea okay. versus versus a flat. Okay, so when you have it, it'll actually be So it'll be angled as opposed to um yep, flat. It'll be like so. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now um you know we always talk about like I use my little screwdriver. If I was going to do that I would kind of push down on the two corners to get a clean line when we're moving the tabs. Um in that one there. So. That's fair. But uh, that's yeah, a, that's, so that's, we've got that box that we talked about, but we also have a backdrop that looks like so. Yeah, and that's a good, yeah, and it's a, a different board. idea to have that bit of an angle yeah. on there. Um, for those of you wondering, will this fit in my Ikea display? Yes, it will. That uh, backdrop <laughs> will not uh, extend past um, the height of the inside. Does that answer that? <laughs> There's pre-answering a question there. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a question answer. But uh, if if you did, uh, that's something I know myself. I'm a, oh, I love that. Oh, it's not going to fit where I have it. Uh, I got to put it on a shelf. And you won't know. It will fit inside. All right. I love this guy. He's really a neat look. Really, really. The suit is so fun. This is, the, I mean, yes, it's updated, but there is that classic origin suit look uh, to it. I liked it. I always thought it was fun. Um, other questions on here. You're going to see up on the front here and then on the belt. That's great. All of those areas here and here and then down along the belt and the front is done with a clear translucence to it that does not light up, however, does give that same feel. Yeah, that reflective vibe mm -hmm. really. That sort reflective of vibe. Um, love that suit. Really dig the look. And the colors do, uh, do pop a lot. Um, from that 3D printed onto the arm that we see there as well. Um, this is just, a, it's, he's, he's fun. Paul is great in the role. Uh, the character um, is 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 just a lot of fun to me. Uh, real quick, I, I know. I mean, we're we're starting to wrap down mm -hmm. too. But um, 
I want to talk about the stand for a second. Is mm -hmm. it a standard? Um, is it the standard standard? Oh, I'm sorry. Dynamic? You know what? We looked at the backdrop and, and he stands so well on his own. Uh, yes, let's take a look at that. This one I, this is, is why I'm here for you, bud. I'm here. Yeah, thank I'm you. Here thank you for doing that. Okay, this one here um, is, uh, I know we talked about that. Um, this is the suit that he has in Endgame. However, um, this is done with the Ant-Man and Wasp. Okay, mm -hmm. so it has Ant-Man and Wasp, him on there. The quantum, oh wow, that was neat. Um, and the <laughs> quantum realm behind him, uh, standardized stand. So now what we've seen, you know, with the in-game ones and this and the other is the character logo on them as well as the Avenger logo. This one here where you see that character logo was on the box where we saw the PIM. Is that prop for the stand? Is that different than what we've seen normally? That looks like a different shape. No, no, the, uh, the little turn in on the side. No, yeah. that is that is what uh, we've gone with in uh, for a bit now. Uh, what I like about this figure is doesn't really need that, but there it is uh, with it for you to see. Um, there. If you live in an area where there's going to be a lot of motion, or you know, kids running past your display shelves a lot, uh, you know, obviously do it. Have a little have a little extra protection uh, for it. Yeah, that works. Cassidy, let's. Uh, what do we got? We we got anything there? You know, speaking of the base and the stand, JJ Joe on YouTube wanted to know, is there the possibility to put him in like a flying position or? I wouldn't with this. Um, um, I th uh, what, you're, what you're asking about with that would be kind of quote dynamic uh, flight poses. This stand doesn't come with a dynamic stand. Um, so that would be obviously a bit of a, of a hindrance. Um, we've also discussed a little bit of the uh, let's see, that's a little more Superman-y, but um, trying to do some form of high pose. Let's, um, but can I can I kind of do that bit of flight? Uh, let's see. You know what? They've got a thing here. I'm gonna. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> I like how you're Popeye talking to you. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and uh, spinach uh, there. Uh, I kind of tried to quit very quickly uh, do the pose that is on the uh, base itself and kind of hike it up a little bit. Um, I, I think where we're going with this is it is probably it's, it's, possible, it's possible, but I don't find that um, this type of stand with doing that type of thing is um, is is stable yeah. enough for 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 me you to set it on a shelf and not worry that it's going to take a tumble. Maybe at least one point of contact on the ground. Maybe one foot touching yeah. the ground. Yeah. Or I, um, I, honestly, if I was going to be a hundred percent honest, I wouldn't. There we uh, go. Like you said, uh, that that works. Okay, yeah. Jeff, you brought up a nice idea. So just barely resting on that foot there, but it does give me a bit of, uh, of motion. So, I think Terry Smith just exploded when he saw how good of a pose you kind of just threw together right now. No, no, Terry Smith. I will probably get a message later asking me to no longer do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What, what, what are you doing? Um, uh, Why would <laughs> you know, I can't, I think that Marvel, when they introduce, another bad villain that they need a voice to. Um, I I will petition for Terry Smith to be it. He's a golden voice. He's a golden voice. If you he, haven't, he is if you indeed. The dulcet if tones. Uh, how to be a poser or, 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 or any of the stuff that he's done. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's a soothing, golden, silken voice. Yeah, the, the game shows all of it. It's fantastic. Um, Cass, any other questions? Uh, hopefully that gave us a little bit of the can I make him fly. That did, yeah. Um, that was very helpful. John on the Let Your Geek Sideshow Facebook group wants to know if he has a hand for holding the suitcase. Um, does he have a suitcase holdy hand? Um, no, no. Um, I looked at that myself to see if that was a feasible. Um, and it's it's good that you bring that up. The hand, the only hand that would even be close to that is this one here that kind of has the extended thumb. However, the fingers are molded already closed. So we would not. Um, oh, hold on. Yeah, 
it's a it's a problem. Oh, we have a. Did the lights go out? Are you guys? Oh. Uh, have yeah, you been well, destroyed? Just, okay, you're saying it was it was it was another opportunity to show off those cool yeah. lights in the eyes. <laughs> but okay, um, as as far as one like that that uh, fits more directly more. onto the the case, that would be no. Perfect. Yeah, that answers that question. Um, okay. We also had a like one of those fun personal questions on YouTube from John. He wanted to know what is your favorite available um, either Hot Toys figure or your most anticipated pre-order at the moment? Oh boy, um, most anticipated pre-order. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, some of my favorites that we've recently done were the Solo. I waited quite a long time. I was very, very excited uh, to get those. Um, there are some things that uh, I think we'll see in Sideshow Con that I'm pretty darn excited uh, as well. Um, boy, I love my solos. Uh, any of the classic Stormtroopers, I'm, I'm always a big fan of any of the, the troopers because they're such a neat uh, idea. Um, and the Thanos that uh, Jeff and I got to take a look at is, wow, <laughs> you talk about a big, impressive piece of art. Um, they're pretty amazing. So. I have so many, it's hard for me to say, what do you have a favorite? I'd probably have to have one of those top 10 lists and I would never want to, I would always want to do them in pencil because they're, always, you know, they're, they're going well, to change, but. It's funny because my, you know, I see some of the people's collections in the Let Your Geek Side Show group. Oh, and, I know. And first off, I'm blown away. Yeah. Uh, how do you have all that space and uh, time and, and, and money to have all access to this? Um, so my collection is a lot smaller in that world, but the um, vintage Boba Fett, Oh, yeah. Uh, that's one that I almost threw my back out trying to get. That and the speeder bike with the scout trooper with the child in the pouch. Mm -hmm. Mandalorian. I mean, that that's like a that's a no brainer for that's, me. Yeah, that's and it's such a branch with that one there where you're going to what we love from the original trilogy is those speeders in Jedi. When we saw those, we what? lost our minds as uh, as younger individuals. Um, and then we lost our minds again with the child and this and that. And now, you know, you put those two worlds together. So it's great. Um, yeah. So I'm excited for that one. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of great things, um, uh, coming up. Um, excited. And some of those you're going to be seeing during SciShow Con. Uh, Cassidy, do we have anything else or, or, uh, are we, have we covered them all? Um, that pretty much covered it. We had a lot of love in the comments about the popping out red too. Yeah, the color is really great. Uh, the colors are go colors are gorgeous on this. Um, it really has a a bright depth uh, to it. Um, uh, really, really like. Well, it. I, I I agree. I think it looks great, and uh, that means that we have we have exhausted our time. We are at ten, we are one minute left, um, <laughs> which means I say all right, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. You've been an absolutely amazing audience. I say this every episode, but I can't impress upon this uh, fact enough that we don't have a show without you. So all of your interaction is what we thrive for. We live, for, we love those questions. Um, we love having Cassidy on there. So thank you, Cassidy, for giving us, uh, uh, relaying all these questions to us from the audience. Um, don't forget, everyone, make sure you pre-register for Sideshow Con. It's free. You're not, you're not going to lose anything. You get first in line access to con exclusives, special giveaways, swag, and so on. Sideshow Con will be the week of July 20th through the 26th, so it's coming right up. We're going to have an actual booth. Cassidy, she has, she is going to, and she probably is right now, dropping a link right now. Uh, and if you are uh, right now, do it now. And then uh, you can check out side.show slash con um, for that information as well. Now, if you're interested in any of our giveaways, I'm going to need you to take a look at our monthly Gleam giveaway for the Captain America concept art six scale by Hot Toys. It's a very popular piece for a reason. Uh, and you also have the opportunity to gain 1,000 entries in this giveaway by sharing a photo of you doing something that you could do all day, as Cap would say. Uh, and, and I'm guessing it would be reorganizing your Hot Toys. Uh, this could For be us, playing yeah. video games, petting your dog, uh, drinking uh, a sustainable but uh, recyclable amount of uh, water, uh, as I am known to do. Um, so show us what you could do all day. And then Cassidy is going to drop a link in the chats to that contest right now so you can learn more details. And this contest is active until July 21st at 11.59 Pacific p.m. 
So right before midnight, uh, right before it turns to the 22nd. Um, Cassidy, thank you so much for being there. Thank of course. Uh, Guy, thank you so much for being such an amazing uh, co-host and toy player with her. <laughs> thank you. Uh, now, we're going to see everybody here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific for another episode of The Comics Hall with Amy and Paul. Uh, Amy and Paul are amazing. They do a, a lot of great stuff with comics, and I'm sure Amy has some really cool uh, news that she might share with the audience as well. So that's really exciting. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And, of course, as always, don't forget to let your geek side show. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Thank you. That smile, that's all.